Hey guys, Mr. Macro here. Part two of lesson 1.9 has us doing a couple of different things with inverse functions. First thing we're gonna do is use our horizontal line test to determine if a function is one to one. And then part two, we're gonna find inverse functions algebraically. A couple quick definitions here. A function is gonna be one to one if and only if it has an inverse. So one way that we can check to see if a function has an inverse is by running what's called the horizontal line test. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to look at the graph of the function, and if we can draw a horizontal line that intersects at more than one point, that means the function does not have an inverse. But if all of those horizontal lines that we draw in intersect at one or fewer points, then our function will have an inverse. Okay, so just a quick example of the horizontal line test and how it works. Uh, we're given this function f of x equals x squared, so we know that gives us a parabola-shaped graph. So if we draw on a flat horizontal line, we can see that our graph intersects this line at two points, okay, meaning that this thing would not have an inverse. And here's why that horizontal line test works. If we start taking a look at a table of values, so here are some ordered pairs for this function f of x equals x squared. If we plug in negative two, we're gonna get four. Plug in negative one, we get one. Plug in zero, we get zero. Plug in one, we get one. Plug in two, we get four. Well, the whole reason this horizontal line test works the way that it does, remember back in the last video for 1.9, we talked about finding inverses by flipping the order on those x and y values. Well, if we do that and we look at this x value of four, well, now we have the same x value going to two different y values, which going back to our original definition of a function, we can't have this happening. We can't have the same x value going to two different y values. So the inverse, if we did flip this thing around, wouldn't exist. But let's say, for instance, that we ran the horizontal line test and everything checked out. We decided that our function is gonna have an inverse. Here's the process that we're gonna go through in order to actually figure out what that inverse function is. Step one says, use your horizontal line test and actually check to see if this function is gonna have an inverse before we even get started doing all this work. Step two, normally our functions are written in function notation, but we're gonna rewrite it for this process. So we're gonna replace that f of x with a regular y, like we're used to using. And then step three, if we think back to that inverse stuff that we were doing before, we flipped the x's and y's on the ordered pairs. Well, now in the equation, we're gonna flip the actual x's and y's. And then we're gonna solve this to get y all by itself. Step number four says, after we get y all by itself, we're gonna replace that with our inverse function notation. So this f negative one of x, that just means the inverse of f. And then step number five, we should always check our answers. So we can verify that these things are actually inverses by running that function composition and making sure we end up with just a plain x at the very end. So here's the first example we're gonna take a look at. We're given the function f of x equals five minus three x all over two. And we're gonna find this inverse using those algebraic steps. So very first thing says that we should check to see if this passes the horizontal line test. So I'm gonna pull my calculator up so we can punch this thing in and graph it out. So here's my calculator. I've already got it typed in there, five minus three x over two. Remember fraction bar just means divided by. If we graph this thing out, we get a picture that looks like this. It's a nice straight line function. So no matter what, this graph is gonna pass the horizontal line test. So now we're gonna keep going with the process on actually finding the inverse. So second step said that we were gonna replace this f of x stuff on the left-hand side with our normal y equals notation. So y equals five minus three x all over two. Step number three said we were gonna flip the order on these x's and y's. So now it's gonna say x equals five minus three y all over two. And now what we're gonna to try to do is isolate this y variable, try to get that y all by itself. So right now I see the y trapped on the top of this fraction. So in order to get rid of this divided by two, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. So those twos cancel out on the right-hand side. Left-hand side, we've got two x equals, and then five minus three y. Still trying to get y all by itself. So I'm gonna take this five and subtract it over to the other side. So then we've got two x minus five equals negative three y. Last step in order to get y by itself, we just have to divide by negative three. I'm gonna flip the order on this. I always like to write my equations with the y first. So we've got y equals two x minus five all over negative three. 
Last step says take this y equals equation and rewrite it using our inverse function notation. So f negative 1 of x equals 2x minus 5 all over negative 3. Very last thing we need to do is make sure that these two things actually are inverses of each other by doing that function composition stuff. So I'm going to go with f composed with this supposed inverse of x. So remember function composition, that means in our function f right here where our x value is, I'm going to replace that with this 2x minus 5 all over negative 3. So we get 5 minus 3 times, now we have to plug this big fraction in, 2x minus 5 all over negative 3, and then all of that is divided by 2. Now we're just going to do some basic algebra stuff to this to try to simplify it down. I see this negative 3 times this other negative 3, so those are going to cancel out, and this is going to become a plus in the middle here. So now we've got 5 plus 2x minus 5 all over 2. Well, here we've got 5 plus a negative 5, so those are just going to cancel each other out. So we've got 2x over 2, and then the 2s just cancel each other out. So a lot of canceling, a lot of simplifying, we end up with just a plain x at the end. So these things are in fact inverses of each other. Here's another example. As always, feel free to pause the video at any time and run through these on your own. So for g of x, we've got the cube root of x plus 1. I'm not going to graph this one out. I already know that it's going to pass a horizontal line test. You guys can graph it out if you want to. I'm just going to get to work on figuring out what the inverse is. So quick little rewrite, we've got y equals the cube root of x plus 1, and then remember flip the x's and y's, so x equals the cube root of y plus 1, and now we're going to work on getting y all by itself. In order to get rid of this cubed root, we're going to have to cube both sides of our function, so those things cancel each other out, x cubed equals y plus 1, and then I'm going to subtract the 1 over, so y equals x cubed minus 1. And again, rewrite this y so that it is back in that function notation. So f with a little negative first power of x is x cubed minus 1. Now, running the function composition real quick to check our answer. I'm going to do g composed with this supposed inverse. So I'm going to take this stuff and plug it into my original function right there for our x value. So we've got the cube root of, replace this x with this stuff, x cubed minus 1, and then we've still got the plus 1 hanging out on the end. So if we look at simplifying this down, well the plus 1 and the minus 1 are going to cancel each other out. So we've got the cube root of x cubed, and a cube root and a cubed cancel each other out, so we've got just a plain x. So yes, this thing is the inverse of that function we started with. Okay, last example. This one might be a little bit trickier since we've got a fraction set up on the right hand side. So if you want to just follow along with me as opposed to pausing the video, totally fine with that. So again, we rewrite this using y equals. So we go x minus 3 over x plus 2. And again, flip the x's and the y's. Now we've got two places we're going to put y values in this time. So x equals y minus 3 over y plus 2. Make sure you replace both of those. Now since this thing looks like a fraction, what I'm going to do is take this denominator and multiply it over to the other side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 2, so those cancel out. Left hand side, we've got y plus 2 times this x value equals y minus 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this x through here, so we get y times x plus 2x equals y minus 3. Now our whole goal is to try to get y all by itself. So I'm going to add this 3 over to the right hand side. So we get yx plus 2x plus 3 equals y. And we're going to have to bring this yx stuff over to the other side also because it's got a y term in it. So now we've got left hand side 2x plus 3 equals y minus y times x. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of factoring on the right hand side since each one of these has a y value in it. So we'll factor a y out of there, remember 
factoring is just like division. So if we take y divided by y, we get 1 minus, and then we'll end up with an x left over there. 2x plus 3 still hanging out on the left. One last step to get y all by itself. Divide by the 1 minus x. And again, I'm going to flip the order on these things. So we get y equals 2x plus 3 over 1 minus x. And then last step, rewrite using our inverse function notation. So f inverse of x is equal to 2x plus 3 all over 1 minus x. I guess that's it as far as this video goes. Remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.